Back in studio, I'm joined by Dr. Njo King Gumi, a healthcare advocate. She's involved in learning and development at the Nest and Heaver Fund, which I understand uh, deals with a lot more than just health related issues you we don't even deal with health yes. honestly we mm -hmm. we we're we're an arts company yes. and in as far as HIVA is concerned we do creative economy financing mm -hmm. um the reason i'm here as health is because my background is in health um you I, are a medical doctor i am a medical doctor and i practiced um, in both public and private sectors mm -hmm. for a while uh, not a very long while but a, lo long enough to mm -hmm. kind of try to understand what the issues are with both and a lot of the issues tend to be identical yes yeah. and i've had some of your opinions uh, with regard to uh healthcare mm. in general mm. and how we man uh, the management of healthcare right uh, now that we are in this space as a country where we're discussing uh, universal healthcare yes social protection mm. is also uh, coming into that uh, all these things some of these terms are fairly new to Kenyans absolutely uh, they're fairly new and uh, universal healthcare as uh, compared to probably universal health coverage right yes and kenyans are not really conversant with this thing so when we talk about universal health care what exactly do we mean um first of all uh let's 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 kind of backtrack and try to understand mm -hmm. ourselves as kenyans and where we are um it i think it's incredibly sad that it took getting to 2018 for us to be discussing universal health care um for kenyans Mm -hmm. as, as a whole yes. we should have had these conversations a long time ago um and a lot of people who are who are who are invested in in history and that they, they can tell us the many different histories of this country economic political social cultural mm -hmm. um will tell you that um a lot we've started this conversation at several points in time and then kind of abandoned it because something else came along mm -hmm. again because we are what is called resource limited for several mm -hmm. reasons, including our GDP, ETC, um, varied thefts that there are records mm -hmm. of again. Um, it becomes hard to spend money on the health care of everybody. Mm -hmm. um, first, because again, we don't have the money. And then the second thing is that we start having to think about providing services to people for profit as opposed to looking at health yes. as the public good that it is mm -hmm. and that we should be making more investment to keeping people healthy um, rather than coming and taking care of everything when it reaches crisis mm -hmm. point that being said the thing that we often hear when we talk about universal health care is like our hearts want to hear the word free mm -hmm. that's not what it is universal health care is not free what universal health care actually is is the ability of a state to put in place measures that then send out as much health care to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. Some people have even defined it as being able to cover at least 90% of a population. So it's, again, that universal doesn't mean 100%, 100. Yes. not necessarily. Um, it can mean 90 plus. Yes. Um, again, uh, when it comes to universal not being equal to free, we do have to ask the question, who pays? Who pays? Because health care is a cost. You're asking people for our services, you're, for their services, you're using um, equipment, you're using materials that are disposable, but, uh, equipment is getting wear and tear. All of those things are costs yes. um, that, that, that have repercussions on, are you going to have to replace the CT machine? Are you going to have to start mm -hmm. thinking in terms of, for instance, um, there's a big billboard on, on what road is it? near parklands the parklands avenues um that's about a certain hospital getting a pet scan mm -hmm. which would be the first pet scan in this country mm -hmm. right uh, so now when they have to incur the costs of getting how they're going to recoup yes. those costs when you have to get a doctor to spend an hour with you trying to tease out your issues who is going to pay that doctor for that time so while the end product and the ideal is that we want kenyans to pay as little money out of pocket for health because health is one of those grand equalizers yes. where you can start out as a millionaire and in trying to keep yourself healthy you end up with nothing you can mm -hmm. end up bankrupt yes. or completely broke mm -hmm. and so can you imagine what that means then for people who already start the game poor and then end up with the same disease that requires millions yeah. to manage mm -hmm. and that now you need some people have the have the benefit and we were reading this yesterday some people have the benefits of being able to go to to india for their cancer treatment yes. because their cancer treatment is being paid for by the state but the vast majority of Kenyans don't have mm -hmm. um, that sort of that sort of privilege, and so when we come back to universal health care, we ask ourselves the question: Who will pay? Um, and that again is it's divided, and these are macroeconomic discussions. Yes. And I don't have the range for those. Yes. I'm not an economist, but the first thing. Um, it, it, it becomes a matter of taxes and mm -hmm. then now we have to even go to the issue of taxes and find that the vast majority of people who are taxed the highest are also a very small group okay. but so before, when before you make get to when you make funding, a very small group carry yes. the burden of everybody Everyone else. then now you start passing on inequalities in ways that we shouldn't again okay before we get to the issue of funding because that's a whole issue yes and, but, and the but the funding issue is key it, to understanding is key. universal health care uh, uh, if we were to gauge 
uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta because he's made it one of his big four right. agenda. Okay. Uh, it is one of the main pillars. Right. Uh, at the end of this uh, four or five years, mm. what would tell us that President Uhuru Kenyatta has been successful in as far as achieving universal health care for Kenyans? Uh, what, 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 what should we expect at the end of that? I think that's a good question. Um, I feel as though it's, it's not fair to, to put it, to put it on, 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 on His Excellency to have achieved a certain number of things without having a baseline in as far mm -hmm. as what other countries have done. Because this is a wider macroeconomic yes. conversation that doesn't have a bearing on the politician or the political party mm -hmm. or the government that is bringing it to the fore. So when we're asking ourselves, if we are honest about trying to implement universal healthcare and we set for ourselves goals. What are those goals? How do those goals compare to countries mm -hmm. that have similar budget lines, that have a similar commitment to health that they can follow through with budget allocations? Because we are the same country who have done yes. as little as 4% allocations to health budgets for the entire, as, as a, compared to the rest of the budget. And we also signed the Abuja Declaration that says that we should 15%. be giving 15. Yes. So if we are giving 4, when we said we would give 15, mm -hmm. where is... And then even from that fall, we are seeing that billions disappear. Billions have disappeared from the health docket. Yes. Billions have disappeared from place X, place Y, place Z. Right? So now we have to have honest conversations about that, that we allocate very little money. Of that very little money, a lot of it disappears. Mm -hmm. And then we still have these grand goals. But if we come back and look at universal health care and achieving it objectively, we need to ask ourselves if we are fair about who we are, about how much money we're going to put into this thing, about how many measures we're going to pay for, put into place, um, do monitoring and evaluation, um, assess, regroup, mm -hmm. ETC, over the next five years. We then set those things. With all of those things put into place, we can't come up with arbitrary measures for this should have happened for all Kenyans for us to say that we are achieving universal health care. Okay. I feel as though it's more of a process uh, and we, we are more at a place right now where we understand the idea of co-paying for yes. care um, and then, then we, maybe what we should do is work to reduce the amounts of money out of pocket. But that you Kenyans do agree. Paying, because that's, that's the, be the best end user uh -huh. indicator. But that you if Kenyans are putting politics. out less yes. for health care than they are now. I feel like if we did a study now and mm -hmm. then we did another study in five years and we found out that by and large Kenyans are paying less money yes. out of pocket, we are doing and less harambees. That could be a nice uh, meter to, to, to measure the success. It would be an interesting one, but we would need data now. Mm -hmm. And we would need coll where data we collected now, again we'll over there. the next five years and then we collect data again but you over, do agree at, the, that at the end of five. Political leadership uh, will, uh, and even goodwill, yes. in as far as this is concerned, will be key. Not even le leadership and goodwill, because a lot of times what we do unfairly to our politicians is that they come they say they make they make they make a grand declaration and then they walk away and then they mm -hmm. leave everybody else figuring out okay so how are we going to do this yes. i feel like for us political leadership needs to cross into into political muscle mm -hmm. and political push through again we're not talking about um developing a nanny state where the president or or, or 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 the cs has to be personally mm -hmm. standing in a place to make sure that a thing is done but what we need to do is find out what everybody else who has to implement a thing needs and then be honest about meeting those needs okay so uh, at least now we have an understanding that universal health care means the ability yes by the state to ensure that at least medical care uh, medical services are affordable to the majority of Kenyans. Are available. Available. And I guess availability does cover affordability. affordability. But yes, uh, that if we're going to say that we have universal care, it means that more Kenyans are and at least 90% of Kenyans are able to, because of a government um, mm -hmm. uh, intervention or because of regulation or because of better um, budgetary allocations, mm -hmm. more Kenyans are able to access he the health care services that they need. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, there are those who now equate a lot of this mm. to medical insurance. Right. That uh, when you talk about uh, universal health care, that means uh, there'll be medical insurance uh, for everyone. Uh, but is that the case? And I is that the only way to handle or to uh, improve access to health? So here's the thing with medical insurance. Um, the thing that insurance does is assure you that at a point in time of crisis, you will not be paying out of pocket. And that is across the board. Mm -hmm. If it's home insurance, if something happens in your home, for example, your things are stolen, your home burns down, or flooding happens, as has happened for so many mm -hmm. Kenyans tragically over the last couple of, couple of weeks. Um, what that means is that you don't have to bear the burden of that crisis alone. That's what insurance is. And so what they do, and I mean, like it's a very basic understanding of insurance, is that they have to compute risks, yes. um, all sorts of things, all these math, and then they come up with a certain amount of money that they feel that they can take from you um, every so often as you making sure that 
should there be a problem with you, um, the, 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 the situation is, is, is taken care of because you have also been putting money towards yes. this eventuality. Uh -huh. As regards healthcare, it's exactly the same thing. That ideally, you give money when you are healthy, such that when you are sick, which will ideally happen less often than you being healthy, mm -hmm. there will be money to take care of That's you. That's the hope. That's the hope. So, in as far as insurance for this is concerned, what people want is a registration of Kenyans. They want as many Kenyans as possible to be paying whatever small amount of money, like a, an amount of money that now they have to compute based on how many people have registered, how many people do mm -hmm. we have, what kind of services do we want to be able to offer, what is the disease burden of this country? Because again, uh, we can say that uh, we've, we've already seen that our mothers, we can't, yes. be, we can't be making them pay mm -hmm. to go and deliver their children children because when, 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 we, when we now insist on them, come, come, them coming with money, they die when they mm -hmm. deliver outside of healthcare facilities or outside of formal healthcare um, spaces. And even then, when we look at the numbers, many more Kenyans are born outside hospitals than mm -hmm. are born within. So even when we say free maternity, um, and ideally that is supposed to be a universal project, has it reached every single Kenyan? Mm -hmm. And we have to ask ourselves if it has not, why hasn't it reached every single Kenyan? Okay. So in as far as um, using insurance as a way to achieve this, I think I th that's what very many countries have done, mm -hmm. that all of the citizens are registered to a central registry. We understand them that way by the demographics that they are. We have a fair understanding of what our disease burden is. And then now we can start seeing okay. for, with the math, how, mm -hmm. how much money do we spend to keep each citizen healthy? And then again, with, with, with the understanding that not all citizens are Equal. Mm -hmm. Women earn far less money than men in this economy. Okay. We have we are skewed towards a youth population, which means we have a very high population of dependents. Even a vast majority of our old people tend to be at home. They don't have. They're not as abled as uh, most of us who are young. So we have to think about them in terms like that. And again, because age comes with its own disease burdens, okay. and so a lot of older people have to deal with um, having diabetes, having hypertension, mm -hmm. having some of these chronic illnesses that need large amounts of money. Okay. Like if we are honest, to be able to keep them healthy and happy and contributing to this country. Okay. Now, when it comes to the Kenya situation and talking about uh, health insurance, yeah. well, of course, there's a lot of uh, private uh, service providers when mm. it comes to that, but NHIF now comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, the state... Uh, that's the first vehicle it has to actually try and deliver this. Yeah. But NHIF has been here for about 50 years. It was formed in 1966. Mm. A lot has changed. A lot even, has changed. Even in, in as far as Kenyans uh, seeking medical uh, uh, health cover. Yeah. Uh, that organization has morphed over the years mm. to try and accommodate all these changes in the health uh, care sector. But do you think that NHIF as it is currently, with all the challenges bedeviling that organization, that it is still the best vehicle uh, for let's say the current administration that is has taken up universal health care as one of its main agenda uh, that it is still nhf remains uh, the best vehicle for us to get to that destination i feel as though so so here's the thing with nhif nhif is going nowhere it is it, it was it was it was it, unless now we do a thing of now we revamp it completely and we would have to do that legally because yes. nhif is ours due to an act of law yes. Okay, so in as far as the law is concerned, uh, as far as un until somebody comes with a better law that proposes a better institution, mm -hmm. and then now we have to work and push that through with all the lobbying and nonsense mm -hmm. that that'll entail, which is probably going to be a years long process mm -hmm. if it happens at all. <laughs> yes. We are stuck with NHIF. However, it is in the same way that uh, we were having issues uh, with with an incident that happened in in Kenyatta National Hospital a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But it's not going anywhere. W what are we going to? We're not going to go and pull it down mm -hmm. because. Um, because Kenyans have been suffering there, we have to ask ourselves the hard questions in as far as why are Kenyans suffering and what must we do uh, to provide justice for these suffering Kenyans as well as make sure that no Kenyans are going to suffer going forward. Mm -hmm. We do need to accept that um, NHIF are doing a lot. I think on Sunday it was, um, I saw on their Twitter account that they want their enhanced cover, which is super cover, and we're looking forward to hearing about mm -hmm. more about what super cover is. That super cover is going to be able to help Kenyans cover for the management of depression. In as far as depression is concerned, we don't even have figures to try to understand yes. the kind of mm. weight that this particular condition has on Kenyans. And we know that many more Kenyans are suffering, many more Kenyans are undiagnosed than we can actually imagine. Mm. So for NHIF to step up and say, we want to be managing depression is amazing. And it's a mm. thing that definitely deserves it deserves kudos and that mm -hmm. they need to work harder and when we talk to people who are doing healthcare across the continent people in nigeria are on twitter telling us that there is no such thing in their country so they look to us for leadership in, in as far as some of these things are concerned again when we look at nhif we do have to remember what their random um announcement last year 
towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. I think, when they said that actually from now on, we will only be paying for four outpatient visits per Kenyan, yes. as though Kenyans can put you on can a count timer the of times, uh, that you, you will get sick once in a yes. quarter. Um, and that, <laughs> that again doesn't happen even for our under fives. And they have mm -hmm. the data about how many times an under five goes to hospital in the course of building their immunity. Mm -hmm. So they're always getting all these coughs, all these little diarrheas. And these are the babies who are even... Uh, who even receive uh, KP vaccinations. Mm -hmm. And we still have issues in as far as coverage for those. And those are offered for free, yes. roughly, you know, or for a very, very tiny amount of money. And again, even when you ask the KP people, they'll tell you they would rather be giving baby-friendly vaccines, and baby-friendly vaccines will cost probably between twelve and 15,000 shillings a job. Right and baby-friendly vaccines also mean that babies won't uh, get 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 fevers. They won't be irritable for three days after. Mm -hmm. They won't get swellings under their skin when in the process of just trying to build immunity, which is a thing that all babies need. Because now, if you put a baby out into the world without these types of vaccinations, then they get sick and they get things that threaten their lives for real, and babies mm -hmm. die. And we have we've we've been able to reduce under five mortality because of increased coverage of vaccination. Okay. So there are always ways to make things better. And the thing that NHIF is able to do is that the bigger the number of people that are in the pool and that are contributing, the bigger the amount of money that they have. The bigger budgetary allocations that mm -hmm. they have, the more they're able to help But there are those who argue that uh, the, the model that NHIF has adopted is not sustainable. That, uh, okay, fine, a few, up until a few years back, uh, right. we were contributing about 300, 200 shillings a month mm -hmm. for every em em employed uh, Kenyan. Yeah. But uh, it went to a, a much bigger figure. There are those yeah. who even contribute up to 2,000 shillings mm -hmm. a month. So it would mean... If at all they want to cover more people, it means that uh, it's either more taxation, uh, employed Kenyans pay more than they're paying right now, or the government just uh, looks for other ways to fund this. Uh, is that really sustainable? I like, given the number uh, that the highest number of Kenyans who are seeking medical care are not employed. Okay, uh, I think that's a good question. I think we have to we have to look at it from two spaces. First of all, if me and you, Fred, for instance, we have a friend who is having a uh, what's it called? A pre-wedding thing. And you know the way, as Kenyans, mm -hmm. we are those people. So we ask um, our friends. To, yeah, yeah. In as far as pre-weddings, we, mm -hmm. we all contribute. So if our friend needs 50,000 shillings and they come and the, the friend comes to both of us, if the friend asks for, they need 50,000 and they, they've only asked the two of us, then the expectation is that each of us is going to give 25,000 mm -hmm. shillings. If 10 of us are asked, then the expectation is that each of us is going to give 2,500. Um, I feel as though for a very long period of time, the, the whole NHIF thing hadn't been revised. And so one rather violent revision, of course, was going to cause an earthquake under mm -hmm. our feet, right? As opposed to they should have been collecting data over the years where they say, okay, uh, we have a principle where every three years or so we revise our rates based on the numbers that we have, the amount of money that the government is able to allocate to us, mm -hmm. uh, the helpfulness of, of our laws, ETC. So if we were expecting every... X years or so, um, NHIF comes and say, we have new figures, this is what this is saying, yes. but then what has happened is that it happened suddenly. So, of course, people were like, wait, you're not going to come and take a mm -hmm. thousand more shillings from my pocket, just of your, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, it's just the ways in which these things are communicated. If they say, we've been collecting, this is what it's looking like, and then they start giving us warning mm -hmm. a year in advance, where they say, listen, you guys are refusing to pay tax, so, or, or you guys, or, or KRA are refusing to register people formally, because there's a lot of cadres yes. in this country mm -hmm. who are even unable to register to be taxpayers, mm -hmm. because what they do is not listed as an actual job. So there are people who perhaps would be willing to pay NHIF, but and they... Can, and can afford it. And can afford it, mm -hmm. or and want more formal structures, because a lot of us who are formally employed we don't have to remove that money physically mm -hmm. it's our employer that does it for us yes. it's our accountants that mm -hmm. do it for us but then a lot of people don't want to be the ones to remove that money like this so even for us we have to have a little bit more imagination in as far as how do we get more kenyans to pay because again remembering that we don't have as many kenyans paying taxes as we should yes. and that's payee there, all of us pay VAT mm -hmm. involuntarily. All of us, there's many things that we are all taxed for together. But then the place that people are punished in as far as um, pay is that a lot of times the KRA will center all of their, mm -hmm. all of, all of their conversations around who pays for tax, pay, or who, who pays for, for anything in this country yes. on the few people that are paying pay, which again is not fair. Mm -hmm. And that again comes, brings to mind KRA, who should also be at the table in as far as this is concerned, mm -hmm. because it's in their best interest that Kenyans are willing to pay to access quality health care. Okay. Again, I think maybe one point that we have to make and make very strongly is that in this kind of privatization of what should be public goods, we've arrived at a place where we've made people think that quality is a thing that they have to pay for.
Mm -hmm. So we are now at a place where we've started associating public provision of services and public provision of public services as the low quality option, the option for people who don't have. And like some of these kind of cultural labels uh, are the things that we are suffering from mm -hmm. now. So people already have all these assumptions about going to seek public care. And so even while there are good stories about public care, there are excellent stories about public care. I worked in public care for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. There are wonderful people who work in okay. public care. But in as far as um, having all these labels and all these shadows and all mm -hmm. these unteased, unpacked issues that we refuse to unpack, we are unable to then assure Kenyans that the that the that the services that the state is able to offer will be of high quality and that they can trust. Okay. So we're just all in this kind of air of uh -huh. inability to trust one another. Okay. And I think that is one of the things that NHIF also has to deal with. The uh -huh. fact that we don't trust that from certain kinds of institutions we're able to get good health care. And so how do we bridge that gap okay. so that all of us as Kenyans can feel when we are on, on, on Bagathi where we feel like actually if I had a problem I can, can go to, go to Bagathi Hospital, hospital and okay. I feel completely safe doing that. Now when it comes to insurance uh, there are those who feel and I read somewhere that uh, it could have uh, another counter effect mm -hmm. that uh, when you pay uh, um, more or you're feeling you're paying much more uh, in as far as uh, uh, for you to be able to gain access uh, to medical health care that you tend to seek that service even more that uh, simply because I'm paying uh, insurance premium uh, at some point I'll feel like even when I have a simple headache after all I'm paying insurance let me go to hospital now I, I feel like already the idea of a simple headache is problematic for me mm. because how do you know are you a doctor do you know what your headache is caused by if you have a headache you shouldn't be self-medicating in fact this thing where we do jitegeme of kenyans where you feel like there are things i can take care of myself and there are things that i can take to a doctor is born in, in a space of scarcity. Mm -hmm. You should be able, ideally, to take any issue with your body to somebody who is expert in dealing with those issues. In the same way that we take any issue with accounts to people who are experts in dealing with accounts. It's the thing of, um, you see a building that looks a particular way and then you say, I don't need an architect. E, si mm -hmm. like this. You can just draw it but like this. Isn't and then that uh, healthcare, general universal healthcare, should mm -hmm. be more than just seeking wellness in hospital? First, that, um, that, that my general well-being... Yes. Uh, without necessarily seeking that wellness. Fred, you've, even, you've even come back and now you're talking about well-being when before we were talking about a headache. So let me mm -hmm. finish about the headache. Headaches are of so many different types. They have so many different causes. We are already in a culture where we only go to the hospital when we are acute. Things are about to go elephant. And then you ask, start asking people questions and they'll tell you, I've had this headache for seven months. Mm -hmm. I've had this headache for... And then you take their blood pressures and you're like, wait, you've been walking around with blood pressures like this. So there's a lot of things that we imagine that we can take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, people will say, I've just had a bit of diarrhea. It'll go away. Like mm -hmm. my stool is loose maybe three times a day. Nobody's stool should be loose as a habit. You see? So even our own understandings of what a well body is mm -hmm. have been tempered by our ability to be able to access healthcare. Mm -hmm. And as far as seeking wellness, here's the thing. I don't think it's a problem if people if we go through a point in time when everybody has all these things and we start going to hospitals because we are not sure and then the person's job in the hospital is just tell you no you're fine it's mm -hmm. okay go back to work we need to be a little more gentle with ourselves as kenyans we need to value ourselves so we need to, to value more. our lives that's not true either yeah. because who wants to take time off work mm -hmm. to go and sit in, in line we don't want to do that what we want to be sure of fred is that we are taken care of Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't have that experience of care. There are so many women in this country, and I will tell you this for free. Mm -hmm. There are so many women of this country who never get a break at home, just doing non-stop childcare, non-stop mm -hmm. domestic work, non-stop erotic labor for their husbands, mm -hmm. and that we actually admit them so that they can rest. Mm -hmm. Kenyans don't know what it is to rest. Look at us. We are hustling, struggling, mm -hmm. suffering. <laughs> And they come to doctors so that they can receive relief. A lot of my, like, my entire class yeah. um, are out here practicing in all manner of places, whether it's public health care, private health care, different sectors related to healthcare, and me who left completely. Some of my classmates are there telling us that Kenyans come to them for advice about what to do about title deeds. Kenyans come to them for marriage counseling. Yes. Kenyans come to them for advice in as far as what do you do when your child is rebelling uh -huh. against you. These are the things that people are taking to doctors because we don't know how to take care of each other in society. Wow. And so for me, I have personally been brought students who are truant. I have been brought for students. Child to Yes. <laughs> To, 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 to bring sense to this situation. Uh -huh. And so when you say people are seeking health care, yeah. the thing that people are seeking is health, which the WHO have described as social, physical, and, and, and psychosocial and mental well-being, and not merely the absence of health and infirmity. So it's not okay? necessarily provided they're, they're by doctors seeking, and they're nurses. Seeking, they're seeking health 
and they're seeking care. Yes. Are we able to care for one another enough outside mm -hmm. that by the time a doctor is seeing you, truly the only issues are mm -hmm. things that they can solve physically or if it's a mental health, we understand what mental health is. Look at the way we drive past people who are crazy on the road, who we view as crazy. Yes. And we see and we laugh. Is that care? Mm -hmm. Is that a caring society? Mm -hmm. No. It's not. Okay. When we when we are here laughing at um, our girls for getting pregnant when they're in school and we point at them mm -hmm. and we refuse to look for these unicorn vanishing demographics of mm -hmm. men who make them pregnant, is that care? Mm -hmm. And then now we, we want to say that people are going to the hospital of your... People are not coming to the hospital just like that. They're bringing us but, real problems. But, but is, it, is, it, uh, is it therefore, uh, can we say therefore that uh, universal healthcare is dependent on doctors and hospitals? That's a good question. And maybe that's a question in as far as trying to expand our idea of what health is mm -hmm. and of what health care is. Mm -hmm. But you know, in order to make sure that um, Kenyans are healthy, mm -hmm. we need to create a, a, a good environment for them outside, such that by the time they are coming to hospital, we should only be doing things yes. that are probably curative. Like you're only coming to an institution to help you yes. in as far as achieving some of these things. It's not... So it's doctors, beyond let me, the hospitals. Let me, let me tell you another thing. Yes. Healthcare is divided into, into several aspects. There's primary healthcare, which is preventive. You're not going to get that in a hospital yes. because the, bad, the burden of what's called secondary care, which mm -hmm. is curative, is so high. But in as far as basic things like good nutrition, um, exercise, uh, things like that, you're not going to get excellent points about how to do that in a hospital. So there's an entire other sector of people, uh, personal trainers, mm -hmm. nutritionists, things like that. And then we look at, we start looking at healthcare then as a classist and elitist pursuit. Um, because how many Kenyans are going to be able to give an hour of their time to wear cute little outfits and go to a cute little gym, right? Wow, and, and, in, and so we can say then yeah. that an element of us investing in primary health care for the population of Kenya mm -hmm. is making sure that we have good sports facilities. And but not even just, issues like and not hand just washing. For, and, not, and especially that. But then mm -hmm. now when we ask ourselves who has uh, a good water supply, mm -hmm. how much is soap? Mm -hmm. Are we then making hand washing a classist pursuit? Okay. And so when people are getting sick and then we say we expect diarrhea in certain areas, is that normal? <laughs> well, right? uh, so, so in as far as uh, primary health care, uh -huh. um, the entire universe of that is not a universe that you're going to find terribly well explained in hospitals. In hospitals we're very limited. Yes. We're very limited in as far as okay. the burden of curative care being so heavy. And, and the third element of care would be tertiary health care, uh -huh. which is rehabilitative ETC, which you find some elements of that um, in the hospital, but a lot of it is about teaching a patient how to be well again. After so it has hospital. to kind of segue out in with a kind of halfway house model to take a, a person back to being well and able to be in society as a well person. Wow. And again, even in our understandings of how do we deal with people who are dealing with chronic illness? How do we deal with people who are differently abled? How, what is our understanding of helping somebody who is blind, who has a developmental disorder, somebody who is hearing impaired, somebody who is unable to speak? Are we able to create an equal society for all of, all of these people that's also part of universal health care wow if you thought that it was a big conversation <laughs> i'm just feeling like we just scratched the surface yes exactly it's a lot a universal health care it is one of the pillars of uh, president Uhuru kenyatta's big four agenda how he is going to manage it of course politically as you said we, it starts with the politics dr njoki ngumi uh learning and development the nest and heaver fund she is a healthcare advocate. Thank you so much for helping us understand where universal healthcare starts and probably how we should even measure uh, the successes, if at all, Jubilee will succeed in this endeavor.